Hello everyone, welcome back to Electronics Prepper, the channel where we try to learn as much as possible about electronics to become more self-reliant with technology and prepare for the future. Today's video is um, just for curiosity's sake. I have, um, I used to have a, an electronic um, a toothbrush that uh, broke after quite a lot of years, quite many years of, uh, um, of usage and I was just curious to do a bit of investigations, see if I can do something about it and um, well essentially see if I can fix it or not uh, and when I realized that I cannot fix it um, I was curious about the waveform that the coil um, generates because two electric toothbrushes um, don't make electrical contact with the uh, charger. Um, they are charged wirelessly, if we could say so. Uh, I don't know if that's a real term, wireless charging, but anyway. Um, um, yeah, they are, they are charged um, without actually making electrical contact with the charger. And it was pretty clear that there must be some coils involved and some alternative current uh, that induces uh, electromagnetic waves that uh, in turn induce another current uh, in the other coil. Um, so I, I was curious about this and I was curious to investigate a little bit. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a quick video to show you just in case you are curious like I was. So I had an Oral B um toothbrush that broke initially i thought that um the the base of the toothbrush broke because i kept the base completely uh, constantly uh, connected to the power uh, wall so i thought yeah after so many years of uh, of receiving 220 volts constantly day and night um it probably broke right well, no, as it turns, uh, it, it seemed that um, uh, actually the toothbrush herself broke because some water, in time, some water managed to uh, pour in to, to get inside the toothbrush and it started to corrode various things. Anyway, um, it was a good uh, exercise because uh, what you see here um, on the right side of the screen, the white uh, plastic uh, oval, that's the base of the toothbrush that charges the toothbrush, but that's the new base from a new, um, from a new, um, how do you call it, a new toothbrush that I bought, okay? I attempted to open the old base trying to see what's inside and if uh, there's anything broken and I failed and this is an important thing for you to know as well if you I don't know decide to try something like this don't you will fail because aside from the fact that there are no screws so you cannot just uh, unscrew the lid of the uh, this base and uh, you know get to the electronics uh, this base was designed to stay in the bathroom. Uh, I never kept it in the bathroom because I don't have a, um, a, a power wall plug in the in the bathroom. But it was designed to to stay constantly in the bathroom, connected to 220 volts or more, whatever you have in your house, um, and it was designed to be 100% safe. Even in case when you accidentally um, hit this base and you cause this base to uh, immerse into water, uh, in order for the dangerous voltage not to get into that water where you could potentially touch it, they have filled all of the electronic components and the wire, the 220 volts wire itself, they have filled everything inside this plastic case with um, a special foam, okay, which is uh, very dense, pretty dense, okay, it's not uh, your uh, regular um, um, 
polyurethane uh, foam that you use in construction it seems to be a special kind of foam that literally covers uh, the entire circuitry and the entire electronic part and even if you attempt to to use um, uh, one of those um, small angle grinders i don't know how to call them and to just cut uh, this plastic case you won't be able to reach the electronics you will just hit that uh, uh, that foam you know that surrounds everything and worst case scenario you will cut through the pcb with the components because you won't be able to figure where they are okay so you can cut around them so anyway even even if you could potentially cut this plastic out you still would not have access to the electronics so that's something to keep in mind in in case you you were thinking like me of opening it and seeing what's inside so what you see here on the screen is the brand new base from a brand new um, toothbrush okay on the left is the old toothbrush uh, where you can see in certain parts like in the tip of the toothbrush on this uh, metal um, chassis you see some marks of um, uh, calcium deposits or i don't know how you call them uh, some marks of rust uh, same with this engine this electric engine um, has some marks that uh, clearly show that water has gone inside in time because the the rubber that was uh, part of the case um, has worn off in time and it allowed the water to come inside and it's also not very clear i will show you a, a zoomed in image of uh, this portion of the PCB but these chips also have um, a bit of corrosion due to water I was curious to to see the waveform generated by uh, this um, coil because um, it was pretty clear that the way this this whole thing charges up and by the way uh, beneath the PCB it's not visible here and I didn't actually shot a photo separately because I didn't thought it was uh, that uh, important but beneath the PCB there's a nickel uh, metal hydride um, battery okay that gets charged by the circuit uh, from this coil this coil acts as a secondary winding of a transformer this spring this steel spring that you see here on the outside uh, normally is actually placed inside so it's um it's pushed inside this coil all the way uh, uh, to the bottom and my best guess is that it wants to act like um, um, the core of the transformer okay and in the base in this uh, protrusion here I imagine there is a um, coil that uh, another coil basically that acts as the primary of the transformer and essentially the circuitry inside the base generates impulses in um, uh, certain kind of impulses in the coil which then transfers the power to the secondary coil okay the secondary winding and in turn this generates a uh, voltage which powers everything up and I, I, I soldered these two um, wires so that I can attach an oscilloscope and take a look at the waveforms. So, because I was curious, you know, I was curious what exactly the, is this doing and how. Um, before we get to the waveforms, uh, let me show you a zoomed image of uh, this IC. This uh, happens to be a microcontroller made by Texas Instruments. Why did they felt the need to, to have a microcontroller based circuit when uh, like really this, th this circuit is supposed to do just two things. One, to charge the battery and two, when you press this button to basically power the, um, power the motor, the electric motor. Uh, this could have easily been done through uh, discrete components and just simple circuitry for some reason they decided no uh, we should put a microcontroller in there 
I cannot understand why, but anyway, it is what it is. So it's a um, MSP 430J2332 in my case, but we see it's a small family of microcontrollers where um, uh, a digit here uh, differs and based on the digit you have uh, more or less things. Anyway, um, it has an ADC, 10 bit, 200 kilo samples per second ADC. It seems to be very low con consumption microcontroller. Um, and yeah, I, I, I imagine this is uh, responsible for both uh, charging the battery and um, uh, powering the, the engine, um, the motor. This other chip is actually not a chip, it's just a MOSFET in the package of a chip, you know, it's a 20 volt and channel MOSFET, uh, 30 milliohms uh, drain to source resistance, and it can it can handle up to 8 amps of continuous current. So, yeah, this is how it was built. And let me now show you quickly the waveforms, because like I said, this was my curiosity to see um, what exactly is the base doing and what kind of uh, electromagnetic uh, impulses it's sending to the, uh, the body of the toothbrush. And yeah, I have to admit these are very, very weird impulses. Now, granted, these impulses are um, observed with um, the rest of the circuitry in place. I, I didn't uh, desolder the wires from the PCB to analyze just, you know, the coil. So it is possible that the PCB uh, himself might um, influence these waveforms that we are looking at. But anyway besides the point um yeah so these waveforms are really really weird we have some oscillations here about 10 volts peak to peak um that are relatively flat for a while and then they jump up and then they decrease over time and then we have a period in which nothing absolutely nothing happens okay uh, and then everything, the, the whole cycle repeats. If we zoom in a little bit somewhere, we can see a, a, a sinusoidal uh, waveform. And if we zoom uh, just enough to see one of, this, uh, of these repetitions, you know, we see this weird shape. Um, the internal frequency counter says that it's around 36 kilohertz. I'm um, not putting my hand in fire over this. It might be a different frequency and it's just uh, the frequency counter was tricked uh, because of this waveform. Anyway, I don't care that much about the frequency. I cared about this weird waveform. And if we zoom out enough, we have 500 milliseconds per division, which means every two divisions um, represent one second we see that we have five of these repetitions in each second no matter where we look at in each second we have five repetitions and not more than that okay um, so five of these impulses yeah um, I satisfied my curiosity this is um, quite weird <laughs> I mean for me at least it, it, it seems to be weird because I can't um, um, I can't really imagine why they would do something like this, but anyway, I'm sure they have a, a good explanation that I just don't understand right now. I was also curious as a, as a last experiment to, to see if this um, spring, this steel spring, is actually doing something, because it's, like, like, like I said, uh, I, I had the suspicion that it acts like the core of a transformer, um that well basically helps amplify the electromagnetic field and therefore uh, you know help with the induction in this coil so i made uh, an experiment to see uh, with and without um 
uh, that spring and this is the waveform with that spring ignore the gap here this was due to the electron uh, due to the oscilloscope sweep okay so this is with that spring and this is without that spring and i'm gonna switch back and forth to make a visual uh, comparison and we kind of clearly see that there isn't any any significant difference or anything uh, any difference at all between these two things so yeah i don't know why they insisted on adding it on adding that spring but anyway it is what it is so yeah uh, that was my curiosity i thought i would share this with you in case um, some of you are also curious or were also curious thanks a lot for watching if you would like to see more please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i will be coming back with more videos about electronics mostly uh focused on building things from the ground not uh, tearing things apart <clears throat> so thanks a lot for watching this video also if you would like to support my work there's a patreon account you can find link in the description by helping me financially buy more electronic components and even devices i can uh, advance faster in electronics learn new things faster and come here on youtube post videos and teach you as well so that i can make your life easier Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.